You want to see how we do it in the pros? Changing your swing is about repetition without repetition. You don't just hit 500 balls with this thing and change your swing. You also don't just hit 500 balls without a thought. Welcome to Earned and Not Given. Well, I guess we got a few things to wrap up from last weekend, so uh, we should start there. But before we start there, I think it was important. Gave a little public service announcement about the flowers last week. Crushed it. Uh, wife was happy. I feel like I have a sugar hangover today, so if I'm a little under the weather, uh, probably just too much sushi and uh, crumble cookies that I crushed as well. So... Let's talk about last week, right? I think we made a prediction about the Super Bowl. Turned out to be amazing. Um, We were both right. Chiefs won in dramatic fashion. It was amazing. And more than talking about the Super Bowl, I think it's important to use the Super Bowl as what I want to talk about as a recap for last weekend. Whether you like Taylor Swift or you don't like Taylor Swift, I think it's amazing that there's a new fan base for football, right? I'm a girl dad. My daughter now wants to watch football with me. Um, So in a roundabout way, Taylor Swift is growing the sport of football and changing so many Sunday afternoon experiences for girl dads around the the world. Um, And I think when we look at the waste management or now being dubbed the wasted management, we got to talk about it because did it go too far? Didn't it go too far? Uh, you see Zach Johnson, you see Billy Horschel, you see these guys that are, you know, interacting with the fans in a, in a negative way in the sense of, like, the fans are affecting the golf. So let's start there. Do you think waste management went too far? Do you think it's no longer golf and it's too much of a party? It's a great question, right? I mean, that was – me and you talked before we started filming about um, – how we were going to address last weekend, right? And I think the bigger story is not golf. Um, What does that mean? I don't know. The last couple weeks, me and you have come in here and just been so happy and talking about golf winning. I'm not going to say golf lost last weekend. Um, Maybe in some areas, golf won, depending on what crowd you're in. Um, I don't have... I wish I could sit here and tell you how I feel about it. I, I just think that over the last couple of years, the more hype, the more notoriety that event gets for exactly what happened this past weekend. Yeah, the next year somebody's going to be like, I want to go and I'm going to top whatever the drunk guy did last year. You know, but who knows what's going to happen on 16 next year? Probably crazier unless they do what we saw happen this past weekend, which is, for the first time, I think, in tournament history, they've really clamped down on the extracurricular activities from the fans. So maybe we see more of that next year from the waste management side, or maybe maybe it gets even more bonkers. And me and you talked about it like when we previewed the tournament about how fun that event was going to be. I'm not going to speak for you. You speak for yourself. I didn't have fun. I don't know why. I didn't have a whole lot of fun. I don't know if it was all the weather delays, too. Maybe kind of dampened it a little bit. Um, I didn't have fun with the waste management this year. Maybe it was just me. I don't know. Yeah, I think, well, certainly if you were a ticket holder on Saturday and you show up to the gate and they tell you you can't get in, that's a problem, right? So overselling a golf event, it seems like, how can we sit here and complain? Because that should be a good thing, right? That there's that many people that want to go. But I think the problem is it's that many people that want to go, but not that many golf fans. And um, Zach Johnson getting ribbed for some of the Ryder Cup stuff. Whether it was right or wrong, crossed the line. Um, guys talking in the middle of someone's backswing, unacceptable. Um, does golf need to have a little less of the shh? in the, you know, quiet clap, maybe, but you don't need people jumping in the bunker, taking their clothes off. A lady fell off the grandstand and fell 20 feet. Like you see these cups all, and it's, it's just, they got to do something, right? And um, the Thunderbirds is an amazing organization. Um, and I know there is no way that they're happy with what took place. So hopefully they rein it back in. Hopefully it becomes this amazing experience where 
16 is wild and it's exciting, but the fans can't affect the golf. And that's what has to take, like, they have to take action on that. The other thing that's just disappointing, right? We got two weeks in a row where the PGA is affected by weather. Um, Arizona is an amazing place, but maybe this tournament's just at the wrong time of year. Um, it's freezing cold. I mean, you look at kids, right? Like, they needed hand warmers to stay warm. You see these guys, it's just, we got to figure something out there. But the golf that did finally get to be played was amazing. I think it was a marathon for a lot of these guys. They had to deal with the rain delays coming in and out. The golf staff did an amazing job keeping that place playable. I think some of the chaos is also because there wasn't enough place for fans to go. So you see them just all trying to get in grandstands because everywhere else was mud. Um, that needs to change. But let's leave the waste management at let's do better, guys. Let's do better. Whether that's you're there and you bought a ticket, you're there to watch golf. Um, maybe there's a way that they can create a separate section, right? You go to Augusta and there's, you know, places off property that are more of a party than on property. And maybe that's a little bit of what needs to happen at the waste management. But uh, like you, I wasn't really impressed with the product. Um, but I was extremely impressed with uh, one of the waste management uh, sponsored players. I think Charlie Hoffman came out and just did an amazing job. That battle between him and Nick Taylor turned out to be amazing. Um, big shout out to them for playing great golf. Uh, great job for them to force the playoff and then an amazing golf in the playoff. Uh, seems like anytime Nick Taylor is about to win a golf tournament, he's going to drop a bomb to win it, uh, which is pretty cool and, and amazing. Um, I was really impressed with, with Nick Taylor this week. Yeah, I, I was actually thinking about that while, while you were talking about wrapping up the waste management. I was like, you know, I didn't – I'm not going to sit here and lie. Like, that's just not – I'll never do that on this podcast. I did not have the most fun with this event. But, damn, they were good down the stretch. That playoff was sick. Um, I'd like to tell you that I watched it. Yeah. I didn't watch it. I was, I was tuned into the football, and that's a little unfortunate too, right? Like, it's amazing. And I went back and re-watched it and – Thankfully, you know, you're able to record stuff and then go back. But it was really unfortunate that the Super Bowl couldn't have started after that playoff because um, I think 99% of the world was watching the Super Bowl at that point. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, you, you get to read about it on Monday. But it's just nice that – it's really nice that it seems like Charlie Hoffman is – I mean, he's going to play this week at the Riv. I hope he continues to play well. I mean, it's just nice like to see guys like that. We talked about it last week, right, with Sergio and guys like that stepping up. You know, I I picked Phil to play well in Vegas. And for three holes on Thursday, because they started early, I was like, damn, what a pick by me because Ricky was terrible. But I was like, damn, Phil's doing good. And he didn't finish well. But it's just nice to see guys like that still playing well. I, I'm really happy for Charlie Hoffman. Obviously really happy for Nick Taylor as well. Um would love to see Charlie play well this week, too. That would be really cool. Yeah, no doubt. And I think um, he he has a chance to play great. Um, going back and looking, right, we we made some predictions. Uh, your guy missed the cut. My Badly. Guy. Ba he didn't just miss the cut. I mean, it was it was bad. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't his finest showing. Um, I thought my guy had a chance. Again, looking on Thursday, I'm texting you saying, what a pick, right? Let's get this out live, show everyone that I picked Sahith. Unfortunately, didn't close it out, but top five finish for one of my picks. Um, neither of us got uh, live correct. Um, and I got to be honest, I didn't really watch that much live golf this week. I watched all Sunday. I, um, that final group. Uh, well, you didn't watch any golf on Sunday at live. I'm sorry, bad. Saturday, Saturday. My bad. I, the, I forgot they moved up because of Super Bowl. It's a unique concept, huh? Um, Saturday, though, that final grouping. Of Bryson, Rom, and DJ. Holy crap. Yeah, it was great. And I'm obviously a huge fan of those guys. And um, I think they did a good job, right? It was nice to see DJ play well. And, you know, maybe this is a year for DJ to step up. I know you've talked about that in the past. Um, but anytime you get to see major champions playing against each other in, in a final group, it's awesome. I picked John to win. Unfortunately, he didn't get it done. But, hey, 
we live and we learn. I think it was great. Um, but let's let's now talk, right? We we got a big tournament this week, right? It's an amazing one. Um, this is where Tiger started his professional career. Just so happens this is where Tiger launches his apparel deal, which again, I told you guys, it's going to be tailor-made. So I'm not sure if I'm Notre Dame of golf here, but uh, what's your take on uh, Sunday Red? Yeah, again, no, an another thing. We've chatted about this a little bit, and I've, I've been in a couple separate group chats with my golf buddies talking about it. Um, my dad is a really big Tiger Woods fan, always has been, loves Tiger. The first, when it came out at 8.30 on uh, Monday, or yeah, Monday, I sent it in the group chat with him and my brother, and my dad was like, I hate it. I was like, wow, because he's, I mean, dude, he has every color of the TW hat. Every color. That's all he wears when he golfs. Um, I didn't like what they initially showed on Monday night, to be fair. Uh, the logo is something. I'll just leave it at that. It's something. Um, I I really like the crew neck that he wore in the practice or the pro-am on Wednesday. Um, I'm really happy for him that he's going to do well with this brand, I believe, because it's him. I don't love it. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of Tiger Nuts that do. It's not for me. The the black crew neck though is fire. That's just kind of where I'm at. I, I wish I had more to say on it, dude. I um I like the black crew neck. Yeah, I mean, I think let's be honest, Tiger Woods. Um, I don't know who coined the phrase, but I'm gonna use it right now. Like Tiger doesn't move the needle, Tiger is the needle, right? And so Tiger Launch is a clothing brand, and it doesn't matter if the logo looks just like the Grove or looks whatever, right? Cool concept that every major championship that he has is one of those arms. Saw a funny thing where it's like turn 90 degrees and they say it looks like a fused spine. And you see all this trolling of they don't like it. Um, but I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm not going to end up having that logo at some point on my body. Because um, I wouldn't be sitting here coaching golf. I wouldn't be able to have the opportunity that I do to coach the players that I do if Tiger hadn't inspired me to switch from other sports to golf so Tiger makes golf cool is the logo cool that's a to be determined but Tiger launching a brand and being willing to say hey I'm willing to leave the TW brand behind and create this brand is really amazing and I think it's important for athletes to understand that sometimes change is good and Sunday red and tiger in Sunday red. And I like how they put the space cause Sunday, right. As long as it's sunny, you can wear the red. Like there's a lot of smart ideas. The smartest idea though is there is now a brand that's synonymous with tiger woods, whether it's the shoes or it's the cashmere hoodie, or it's probably the glove that I can afford, but there's no doubt there's going to be Sunday red in my closet. Uh, I, I said this too. I, I said this in the group chat with the boys on Monday night. I said the red turtleneck wasn't cool until he did it. No doubt. The mock neck at Augusta wasn't considered cool. The sweater vest was exactly. a thing of the past, and then it became cool. Like, let's be honest, those foot joy shoes that he's been wearing – are gross, but I've seen more kids in junior golf tournaments wearing these ugly shoes because Tiger wears them, right? So Tiger makes it cool, but now Tiger's not just launching a brand, he's playing this week, and that's exciting, right? As we're doing this, Tiger's about to tee off. What, what do you think? You think Tiger's going to do okay? Obviously, this is one of these interesting ones where they have that cut inside of a elevated event, so... How's he going to do? Well, we're back on Poa Green, so, I mean, dude, I don't know. I mean, he – If you, how much stock do you put into the hero in PNC? I think he has the speed. I think he has all the ability to play really good golf at a high level. Um, and I think he even referenced this yesterday or, or Tuesday, one of the, whenever he does media. Um, he can hit it as, as far as he wants with the driver. He can hit it as straight as he wants with the irons because he's done it at this tournament before. Is the putter going to get hot? Um, I think that's the one thing that at least I've 
kind of held on to since he's really come back from the car accident. The putter's just not there. And I, I'm assuming it's because of a lot of the practice he can't do with the putter. Um, look, I'd be lying to you if I said I, 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 want, I want to see him win. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I want to see him win. I want to see him play well. And I think – I genuinely believe that he can. Um, is this that week? I don't know. What Which way is the ball going to bump on the Poe this week? If it bumps in the hole for him, yeah, he's going to have a chance. Yeah, no doubt. And obviously, we all saw him make that statement where he's going to try and play once a month. So, we got him playing this week. Probably going to get to see him at least, well, one time in the Florida swing. Then we're seeing him at Augusta. It seems crazy to think, but like – we got this tournament, one more, and then Augusta. So it'll be interesting to see how he does. Um, there's obviously some hills at, at Riv. Um, that walk up from 18 to the clubhouse, not easy, right? So we'll see kind of what Tiger looks like this week. But um, if Tiger's anywhere near the lead, my entire weekend stops. And I'm just watching Tiger Woods, and I think that's probably how most of our listeners are. So I think as a golf fan... It would be awesome to see Tiger do great. Uh, we're all tuning in to see the different outfits and to see what he's doing. I think it's amazing. Um, the new addition on the bag for him is going to be great. We'll see how that relationship goes. Um, and it's always hard when you're playing a golf tournament and you're also playing host. That comes with a lot of distractions. So I would expect that we see Tiger do okay. And then we see a little different Tiger at some point in the Florida swing. And then, like every golf fan, I hope we see Tiger in the mix on Sunday at Augusta. Yeah, so I, I do want to get to our picks for Riv. I, I don't want to forget about that, but before we get there, um, do you think Tiger can win another major? I mean, I think if we look at Tiger's career, and ironically, you're asking this question, and this is where his career started this week, um, Tiger's career shows one thing. You can never bet against Tiger. Um, this guy's had so many comebacks in his career. He's faced so much adversity from injuries to public scrutiny to just defying the odds. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I don't think Tiger can win a major. I'm also not going to sit here and tell you that I don't really hope that Tiger takes down Jack Nicklaus's record. Because, you know, you got that LeBron and Michael Jordan scenario, and there's always these guys, who's the GOAT? Um, Tiger Woods is golf. If Tiger Woods can take down the major championship record, we never have to have that discussion again. He already is the greatest of all time, but I would love nothing more than to see Tiger win multiple majors. I would love Tiger to continue to win, whether that's, regular PGA Tour events, elevated events, or major championships. Because as Tiger wins, golf wins. So, yeah, I do I do believe he can win, and I also really hope he does. Yeah, that, I, think, I think I agree with everything you just said. Um, you know, I think if he were to – obviously, if he beats the record, right, there's no debate. But already in my mind, there's, there's really no debate. Like, if he doesn't get hurt, if he doesn't go through all the stuff. And, yeah, you can say some of that stuff is like – self-inflicted by himself but facts are if he's not hurt he probably already has it yeah and I think the record probably is even more impressive because of what he's done right changed his golf swing multiple times fused multiple body parts and still continues to win so yeah do I think Tiger's gonna win again of course um do I think Tiger's winning this week no um so if you ask me, hey, who do I have to win the Genesis? Um, I hope golf wins, number one, right? I think we need an amazing experience. We need four rounds of golf played at the scheduled time, and we need amazing weather, and we need some of those big names at the top of the leaderboard. Um, I really like Max Homa's interview where he talks about how, you know, he's kind of like the defending champ. Um, I thought that was interesting to hear him say that off of a missed cut. Um, normally, I would take Max in that scenario because I think he has such great history around Riviera and it suits him well. But 
I think we're going to see uh, a resurgence of someone that moves the needle, not quite as much as Tiger Woods, but I got Rory McIlroy winning the Genesis. Yeah, it's a great pick. Um, Max, it wouldn't be a bad look either. Um, I First off, let's get this out of the way. Every single week, I'm going to pull for Ricky. There's no two ways about it. If he's playing, that's my guy. I'm I'm riding for him. I watched him absolutely play horrendous golf. They, I don't know why they kept him on the featured group. That was disgraceful and hurtful for me to have to watch it, but I watch it. I hope that doesn't happen this week. He's not featured, but I hope he plays well. That's my number one pick. Always will be my number one pick. I like Max this week. I think that, what, in the last three years, the only one that's beat him is a guy that's no longer on the tour? And arguably one of the best players in the world. So I'm – I'm going to ride with Max. Um, I know that he's coming off a missed cut, but um, I don't think Max is one who usually lacks for confidence. I don't really think it matters what happens the week before. And if there's anyone that gets up for this event, it's that guy. So I'll ride with Max, and, and Ricky is my 1B. All right, so you, you throw down a 1B. Why don't we do that? Why don't we pick like a little um, underdog pick? Okay, then let's do that. Ricky's my underdog pick. Okay, and I'll take Bo Hostler. Oh, that's a good pick. I like that pick. I like that pick a lot. I like that pick a lot, too, because um, we're going to have Bo's coach on here pretty soon. Um, and if Bo can pull it out, uh, probably can't do Monday because my buddy will be a little hungover, but we'll try and, we'll try and get him on uh, next week if Bo has a great show, and that would be awesome. Okay, yeah, so I think um – I feel pretty good about what we've covered and everything. Um, no live for a bit. Um, that schedule is still something to get used to, and, and maybe down the road we'll chat about that. Um, but, yeah, any closing statements for going into this week? Obviously, I think we're both really excited to get off this podcast and go watch Tiger play golf. So any closing statements from you? Yeah, no, I just think uh, everyone's seen all the press conferences, and um, because Tiger's hosting, they ask him a million questions. But they did ask him some really good questions about – the injection of money into the PGA Tour, what that then does to the possibility of an agreement between PIF and PGA Tour. And I thought Tiger's comments were great. Um, it seems more and more every week like there is going to be this pathway back for some guys. Um, and if Big Cat's saying he wants to help find a way for some of these guys to come back, he didn't exactly actually say that. But um, my take on Tiger was he didn't just definitively say, no, these guys aren't coming back. So as cagey as he can be in those interviews, exciting for me to know that there's a possibility that at some point we're watching Tiger, Rory, and John Rahm in an event that isn't a major championship. And that's, that's going to be exciting feels like it has to go there right I mean if if we're looking at the state of golf and and honestly this year more than ever I feel like Liv's getting a, a lot of traction at least on social it seems like it. a lot of people are invested a lot more people that I didn't see talking about it the last two years are really talking about it this year so they've built a good brand for themselves um I don't know who has leverage now in that negotiation because now PJ has that money as well um but what I think is happening is we're seeing that Liv is becoming undeniable. The players are good. The field is getting much better. Um, it just makes sense. Like, you got to get them all back together. Yeah, let's let's hope. And, you know, we're going to see a lot of those guys together um, at Augusta. Um, and now we start to get into this season, right? Uh, the reason why I picked Rory is I really liked his his press conference where he talked about this year he's making a conscious effort um, to play more because he feels like – he plays better as he's playing, so he's going to play a lot leading up to Augusta. So I'm not saying I'm going to do what you do with Ricky um, and pick Rory every week, but while we see Rory in form, it's going to be great. And this weekend, if somehow we get Tiger and Rory in the mix, it's just going to be amazing. So um, I hope we sit here on Tuesday and we talk about how um, I pulled another Notre Dame of golf and um, came out successful again. Yeah, uh, I think, too, just going back to the Rory Ricky thing, like um, 
mine comes just from like the pure fandom of Ricky. This guy got me into golf. Um, I don't know of anyone that would say picking Rory on any given week is a bad pick. A lot of people would say Ricky, not a good pick on certain weeks. Rory is quite literally top two, top three in golf at all times. So I don't think it's a bad pick. And I think what would be really good for golf would be to see him make another big run, personally. Couldn't agree more. And this week, I think you could have picked, I think, 13 of the top 14 players in the world are playing this week. So you could have picked any of those guys, right? And who knows? Maybe this is the week for Ludwig or maybe this is the week, like I said, for Bo or maybe Charlie Hoffman says, you know what, I'm coming back. My family's on a ski trip. They didn't let me go because I got into Riv, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to get a trophy while they're skiing in the powder. Um, but it's going to be amazing. So I want to go watch golf. Um, hopefully they don't show your boy too much. Um, and hopefully, Unless he's playing good. If he's playing good, show him. Yeah, and I hope, I hope the coverage does a good job with Tiger on that too. Like, we all want to watch Tiger, but we don't need to see – you know, slow motion videos of Tiger Woods walking down the fairway and guys doing a V1 swing analysis of Tiger's gait. Like, let's just let Tiger be Tiger. Let's let him play host this week and let's have some amazing golf unfold. Um, it's going to be exciting. The last thing I want to ask is, what's your take on the golf course? What do you mean by that? Do you like Riv? Oh, I love Riv, right? I mean, the small greens. Um, I, I think that I mean, I love one. One's a birdie hole, right? Ten is <laughs> – ten in theory is a birdie hole. But, I mean, you could get in trouble there really quick. Um, yeah, dude, I, I like Riv. I played on PGA 2K all the time. That's one of my favorite courses to play. It's one of my favorite events to watch. Um, it's, it's something – it's like a weird dynamic, right? Like, you can see guys kind of go low there, but it feels like it has, like, all the attributes to be, like, a really, really tough course. So – I don't know. I love it. I love watching it. I, I'm not an elite player, so I don't know if I could save really like anything intricate about it. I mean, the I as a fan, I don't really like the the Poa greens because when my favorite golfers are missing putts, I don't know. I don't know what to blame it on. So, but again, I guess that's just another challenge, right? Another characteristic of what is one of the best golf courses in the world. Yeah, I think I think it's iconic, right? And I think it's has so many cool architectural things, whether you like 10 or you don't like 10 or you like some of the holes, there's so much history there, right? And so I would just encourage the fans that are watching golf this week to know a little bit about the history and to look back at all the icons of the game that have played Riviera and all the icons playing this week. So hopefully you guys enjoy the golf. Hopefully it's an amazing weekend. And I will not be wearing Sunday red. But I can imagine if Tiger's in the hunt, you and your dad are going to be wearing Sunday red. Yes, on one condition. If there's a certain player that's in contention on Sunday, I might be wearing orange. Ooh, okay. Well, let's leave it there, guys. Um, we'll come back this week with another episode with one of our amazing guests. So um, every week we're trying to do an episode where Casey and I just – talk golf and we recap the week and we kind of just kibitz over all things going on in the industry um, and then once a week we're going to add some value to you with an amazing coach or an amazing influencer to the game so go find us whether it's on Spotify or it's on YouTube um, or it's on Apple Podcast we just appreciate the support and can't thank you guys enough for being on this journey with us you want to see how we do it in the pros? Changing your swing is about repetition without repetition. You don't just hit 500 balls with this thing and change your swing. You also don't just hit 500 balls without a thought. Welcome to Earned Not Given.